This video is sponsored in part by Apex News. Mr. Beat presents Supreme Court Briefs. The United States of America, November 1983. Hustler Magazine, a pornographic magazine known also for crude humor and political satire, publishes a parody ad that targets a popular Christian fundamentalist, televangelist, and conservative political commentator named Jerry Falwell. Uh, yeah, here's the ad, which I censored a bit. It was right inside the front cover of the issue. It basically mimicked the ad advertising campaigns of Campari, an Italian alcoholic beverage that featured interviews with random celebrities that always started with a question about their, quote, first time. Well, in this parody ad, Jerry Falwell shares details about him, um having sexual relations with his mother. Now, the ad did carry a small disclaimer at the bottom of the page that said, quote, ad parody not to be taken seriously. And the magazine's table of contents also listed the ad as, quote, fiction, ad and personality parody. Regardless, after Falwell found out about it, he sued Larry Flint, the publisher of the magazine, as well as Flint's distribution company for libel, invasion of privacy, and, quote, intentional infliction of emotional distress. Libel, by the way, is a written form of defamation. Oh, you don't know what defamation is. Well, defamation means ruining someone's good reputation. So basically, Falwell seemed worried that people might think this parody ad was true. Suing in the United States District Court for the Western District of Virginia, he asked for $45 million in damages, which is around one hundred million dollars today when adjusted for inflation. Well, the jury ruled against Falwell on the libel claim, saying the ad clearly wasn't referring to something that really happened. Still, the jury ruled in favor of Falwell on the claim of intentional infliction of emotional distress, awarding him one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in damages. Well, Flint didn't like this so much, so he appealed to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit, and it agreed with the lower court. Now, Flint and his lawyers had brought up the landmark Supreme Court ruling in the case New York Times v. Sullivan. In that case, the court ruled that if a public figure sues somebody for defamation, they have to prove there was, quote, actual malice involved. In other words, they have to prove the defendant either knew they were spreading lies about the public figure or were recklessly disregarding whether or not they were spreading lies. Basically, it made it hard for public figures to win defamation lawsuits, okay? So anyway, Flint was frustrated. The federal courts seemed to be misrepresenting the Sullivan ruling by saying that Falwell did deserve defamation compensation due to intentional infliction of emotional distress. Couldn't any public figure say that about any kind of parody or criticism of them? Now, Falwell and his lawyers argued that his family had been defamed and they were not public figures. Regardless, Flint appealed again, this time to the Supreme Court, and they agreed to hear oral arguments on December 2nd, 1987. The big question in the case was, does the First Amendment's freedom of speech protection extend to the making of really offensive statements about public figures that could result in them suffering from emotional distress? The court said yes, announcing their decision on February 24th, 1988. It was unanimous. They ruled in favor of Hustler. Well, that's weird to put it that way. Um, let's put it this way instead. They ruled in favor of Larry Flint and Hustler magazine, saying the parody ad was protected speech under the First Amendment. They said public figures like Jerry Falwell can't get money for suing for suffering from emotional distress without showing that the offending publication actually had a false statement of fact that was made with actual malice. So, yep, they leaned on New York York Times v. Sullivan for this case. Oh, and the court basically added that, look, protecting free speech was more important than protecting public figures from offensive speech. Hustler Magazine v. Falwell was a landmark Supreme Court case that made it easier to make fun of celebrities. It represented two wildly different perspectives. On one end was Flint, representing the counterculture of the 1960s and 1970s and pushing the boundaries with free speech. And on the other end, was Falwell, representing a culturally conservative
negative and religious backlash to that. Their feud was later dramatized by the film The People vs. Larry Flint. But interestingly, right after this case, Larry and Jerry put aside their differences and regularly met up to talk philosophy, later becoming good friends. In fact, they appeared on TV together on several occasions. Falwell died in 2007, and Flint died earlier this year. Since the Hustler magazine decision, hundreds of courts have cited the case, and today it remains one of the most important First Amendment Supreme Court cases in American history. I'll see you for the next Supreme Court case, jury. This video was sponsored in part by Apex News. You all know me, I'm constantly searching for new ways to digest the news. And I wanna search as many different sources as possible. Apex News puts it all in one place. The most relevant, the most breaking, and also local news. A one-stop shop, baby. Apex News makes it easy to get that quick fix of content that inspires or challenges you. Also, by promoting what's popular, Apex News helps you stay in the loop both globally and locally. Again, there's lots of local stuff. It's like having a direct line to the pulse of your community. So try it out for yourself. It's free. There's a link in the description of this video and a pinned comment. If you download it, it's not only are you getting a cool app, but it's helping my channel out. So, so thank you, Apex News. I want to know, do you agree with the Supreme Court in the case Hustler Magazine v. Falwell? Let me know in the comments. And also, if you have other Supreme Court cases you want me to cover for this series, Supreme Court Briefs. If this is the first Supreme Court Briefs episode you've ever seen, I have a lot of them. There's a playlist right below that you can check out right now. The more you watch them, the more I make them. So thank you for watching.